All right, so what do we got? Uh, wages, salaries, tips. Uh, this should be shown in box one of your forms, W-2. So that would be the 93,000 that they made. Good morning, Ken. How are you today? I'm good, and you? All right. Oh, yes, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Uh, let's see. Taxable interest. Um, they didn't earn anything else, as was stated back here. It says they had no interest or other income. So we've got a zero for that. They didn't get any other income here for line three because it said they didn't have any other income like unemployment compensation. So that is a zero. And so the adjusted gross income is still $93,000. Make sure you have enough zeros in there. And if there's no sense, I usually just put a line over there instead of more zeros. All right, if someone can claim you as a dependent, uh, check the applicable box. Let's see, if someone can claim you as a dependent, check the applicable boxes below and enter the amount on the worksheet on the back. Um, nobody can claim either of those people. Um, so we're not going to check those boxes. If no one can claim you, then enter 10,000 if you're single or 23,300 if you're married filing jointly. And that previous statement said they are married filing jointly. So we're going to enter what? 23,300. 20, or 20,300, sorry, thank you. 20,300. And then uh, here we're asked to subtract line five from line four. So I'd recommend whipping out a calculator. We'll use a spreadsheet in a moment. I'm just going to use a calculator for now. So we've got the 93, one, two, three, 93,000 minus 20,300. And we get 72,700 for their taxable income. Double check, I copied that correctly. Looks right, looks right, cool. All right, so we filled out the beginning part of the tax form. Let us see what's next. So moving along here, so usually tax owed is looked up from a tax table. Uh, you would first use the line of the table if the taxable income from line six uh, is 72,000 but less than 72,050, write this as a compound inequality. We wrote a compound inequality once or twice before. That is when we have like a less, oops, I'm on the wrong page. Copy this. There we go. New page. Now I can write on it. So that is when we have a uh, a less than symbol with some a variable in the middle, and then another less than symbol. They say to use T for the taxable income, so I'm going to put a T in the middle. And you usually read from the variable. Uh, and so I have a low of 72,000. So the income from line six is at least 72,000. So at least 72,000 would be uh, 72, oops, it's not a two, not a two, 72,000, but it could be equal to because of the at least. So at least means greater than or equal to. And reading from the variable, this says T is greater than or equal to 72,000, but it's got to be less than, so here T is less than 72,050. And commas just to make sure I got the right amount of decimals. All right, so what was their income again? 72,700. So we want to use the table over here 
So again, the left column is the at least the lowest income they can have for that row. And the second number is the highest. So which one do we want? Um, down here in the fourth group of numbers, I think, at the bottom, at least 72,700 up to 72,750. And because of the at least, we can use that particular row, which says they're, remember, they're married filing jointly. So we want the last column. So we want the $10,000, $10,001. So according to the table, they owe $10,001 in tax. Any question about how I'm reading the table there? And again, the first column of the table, the at least is an or equal to, the second one is strictly less than. Uh, so I couldn't use the row above that because the row above is for incomes that are strictly less than 72,700. And this couple's income is exactly 72,700, which means this bottom line is the one I have to use according to the table. All right, next up, uh, and we're gonna spend most of the rest of this assignment picking apart this particular description of how to do taxes. All right, so an alternative to using the table is to use what are called tax brackets. And a tax bracket is just a range of incomes that get to pay a certain percentage. So people that make between 18,150 up to 73,800, they pay 15% on some of their income. Uh, for the income below 18,000, everybody pays 10%. And then if you make more than 73,800, but less than 148,850, then you pay 25% on that extra income. So basically what they're saying is for the first part of your income, you pay 10%. The next part of your income, you pay 15%. And then it keeps jumping up from there. Okay. And these are called marginal uh, uh, tax rates because they only apply to part of the money you make, not all of it. Okay. So is it fair to say, let's suppose somebody made uh, 93 or $100,000 in taxable income. Does that mean they pay 25% on all of their money? The answer is no. They pay 25% only on some of their money, the amount they made over 73800 All right, so yeah, again, it's a marginal tax bracket. So again, somebody that makes money in that range, they don't pay 25%, all of their income is just part of their income. So we're gonna try and figure this out. Our couple, their taxable income was 72,700, right? So that puts them in this second tax bracket here because they're less than 73,800. So that means to make their calculation, I need to, they're gonna pay uh, $1,815 for that first 18,000 plus 15% for anything they made over 18,000. How do we figure out the excess? Just subtract, yeah. So, so I'm gonna write my calculation down here. I'm gonna take their 73,000, or no, sorry, 72,700. I'm gonna take away the 18, which is already accounted for. So I'm gonna take away 18,150 from that. And based on that difference, then I can apply the 15% to that. So I'm going to make that calculation. I'm going to multiply it by 15%, right? Remember, percent is divided by 100, so that'd be 15 hundredths. And then I can add on the $1,815. So this should be the formula for somebody in the second tax bracket here. So I'm going to use a green arrow. 
for an income that fits in this range. So anybody that has an income in this range here, I should just be able to plug it in here and that formula gives me the answer. Try typing that in your calculator as you see it. Okay, whip out your calculators, make a calculation. I'm gonna put mine off to the side, then I'll bring it in and show everybody in a sec. Calculator, it is there. All right, so there's our calculation. And you can type it as you see it into your calculator. Okay, I think I typed it right. So I'm gonna bring it under the screen, see if anything agrees with me. Did anyone get a similar answer? $9,997.50? Okay. So again, this is the formula we want to write on paper first. Remember, write it on paper first. So I should see that written on your paper. Double check on your calculator that you get the same value as me because you need to be a master of your calculator. Okay. If anyone's missing something about this, let me know. I lost my whiteboard to go. No, no, yes. All right. So I got $9,997.50. Is that what I got? I'm right there, believe it or not. All right. Uh, does it match the income in the table? The answer is no. It's not match the uh, sorry the tax from the table. So no, this does not match the tax from the table. It's not far off though, it's what, um, $3.50 difference? The table said it should have been 10,000 and one. Yeah. I got $10,005. On this calculation? I didn't read four, so I did it. Okay. Oh, from the table? What, where'd you get the 10,005? Just, I did wrong. Oh, okay, it's close though. It's not that bad. Um, and let's look at the table for a second. Why might they uh, have had that, uh, a different number? And the thing is, it's a range of numbers they give. And for that range, that's about the tax. Um, so my guess is, let's see, we were in this, the bottom of the third group here. So I bet the 10,001 is related to the 72,750. If we plug that in instead, maybe that's where the 10,001 uh, 10, comes from. We can easily check that on the calculator. Uh, I forgot the number. Where'd you go? There you go. Uh, 2750. Seven. What if we put a five here? Oh, then it's 10,005. Oh, that's what you got. Nice. Okay. All right, so technically they owe 9,900, sorry, $9,997.50, but they could pay 10,001 if they wanted. It would be okay. It's an acceptable range. All right, so um, let's see. Taxable income, we looked at using T for taxable income here. And if you check out my formula, I just circle it in red here. Oops, that is this number right here. So for any taxable income in between these two numbers, you just drop that taxable income in this spot and that's the calculation. So if somebody said they made $30,000, then all I have to do is back in my formula here, put a $30,000 instead, and that should be the amount somebody who makes $30,000 should have paid in taxable income that particular year, $3,592.50. Okay. So we have a, a kind of reusable formula, and this is the kind of thing I would put in a spreadsheet. 
Uh, so we could program a spreadsheet to do this. That's a good idea. Let's program a sp uh, spreadsheet to do this. We're going to do that in a few minutes. Let the anticipation build here. Spreadsheet. Next, what do we got? Okay. Uh, a commonly held <laughs> belief is that marginal tax rate applies to all of a person's income. And I, I think we're all, almost all in agreement that looking at that table, that's not true. Um, so does the couple owe 15% of their taxable income? If not, what percent are they paying? So let's see. Uh, looking back at that table, let me copy this into my notebook so I can scribble on it. New page. Back here. So again, looking at line two here that I've scribbled all over, they only pay 15% on the excess income over 18,150. So the answer to the first question, do they pay 50% on all of the income? The answer is no. They only pay it on the income above 18,150. Write that down. No, they only pay 15, let's just be a one, five percent on the taxable income over $18,150. Again, this is supposed to be a one right there. So to figure out their exact tax percentage, we just take the tax they paid. I'm going to say the tax that they paid was the $9,997.50 and divide by their taxable income, which was $72,700. And this will give me the percent of their income that they paid, the, the percent of the tax on their income. Whip that sucker out on a calculator. So take the tax, divide by the income, see what you get. Should be somewhere between 10 and I'm getting, and again, that's a decimal or a fraction, not a percentage. If you want it to be a percentage, you have to multiply it by 100. So to the nearest tenth of a percent, 13.8% is what I'm getting. Anyone else get that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hopefully we're on the right track. So they're paying, I'm going to write the wavy equals to indicate I rounded, about 13.8% is what they're paying in income tax. Not 15%. All right, tax myth number one, debunked. Okay. Next. All right, some people uh, have been hesitant to accept raises or bonuses because they're worried it's going to bump them up to the next tax bracket and they're going to lose money. That ain't possible. Let's calculate it. So we're going to try and do this here. Page, please. All right. So suppose the couple got an unexpected $1,500 bonus at the end of the year, pushing them into the 25% tax bracket. How much will they pay? So I got a little scribble work to do on the side here. Their current taxable income is $72,700. We're adding to that this $1,500 bonus that they got unexpectedly. So that's going to be what? Two carries of one, four, seven, four thousand two hundred. And if we go and check out our table back here, that is over into this next category, right? 
So now, what do we know? They are going to have to pay ten thousand one hundred sixty-two fifty, and then twenty-five percent of the overage. Uh, I'm going to get a screenshot of that to make sure I get it correctly. Can't see both screens at once. All right, so we're in this tax bracket here. Let's put it in the wrong spot. Aren't you here? All right, so this is the new information we have to consider because they're in this next range of numbers. We're making this calculation right there. So I'm going to write it pretty much as I see it, kind of like last time. Uh, in this group, they're going to pay 10162.50 plus 25% as a decimal would be 2,500, it's 0.25, times parentheses, I got to calculate the excess, which is their new taxable income, 74200 minus 73,000. I need to figure out how much over they made from the 73,800, right? And that's just a little bit over. So just on a little bit of money, they're going to pay 25%. Whip that out on a calculator. Don't do the subtraction first and then the multiplication, then the addition. Just type it as we see it. All right. I'm going to do that on the side screen here. You guys do it on your calculators. In the middle of the calculation, give me a moment. 100. Seven. Did I get that right? No. Three, eight, oh, oh. All right. I'm getting 10,262.50. Anybody else get that? Okay. So let me write this down. 10,262.50. Now, before this bonus, they paid about 10,000 in taxes, right? So for this bonus, they got a 1,500. They're only paying another 262, $263 in tax. Is it worth getting the bonus? Heck yeah. They still have like $1,300 that's just their bonus to keep that they don't have to pay tax on. Okay. So this is a belief people have that if they get a bonus, it puts them in the next tax bracket and they're gonna lose money. It's not true. It doesn't work that way. You only pay a tiny bit of extra tax on that uh, extra amount of money. All right, let's see. So I'm going to let you guys try and answer the next question. I can pause for a moment. So think about that.